crypto market is slowly becoming more and more interesting right now we are watching volatility some of these assets trying to move higher some of these are breaking higher and we kind of see the volume is also increasing in those assets so it's actually literally watching like okay a lot of people are running in a few assets and it's showing the mass psychology breakouts and it's getting movement so that kind of get the attention of the market so if you already knew that yeah you are taking benefit of those movements but what's more interesting is to watch bitcoin first and then look at what xrp is doing for sure because the understanding of what it's doing on a weekly then on a daily and on a micro chart gives us a clarity of where we are right now because it's slowly starting to look more and more positive even though we actually corrected a little down but there are two things to keep in mind one the weekly macd is crossing to the downside the volume is turning negative so that's like i'm slowing down at the same time the monthly macd shows you i'm about to cross back to the upside don't get confused last time when it actually crossed to the downside you had a bounce to the upside not following the same direction you actually had a retracement before you continued to the same direction of the macd cross which means yeah we can agree with the weekly here suggesting it may cross to the downside we may have a little bit of volatility a slow down or time based correction but still the monthly looks extremely bullish that's the story of xrp the market would more or less behave with respect to bitcoin mm -hmm. if bitcoin dominance is breaking this level of support we are coming down here means we get more volatility in the market if you remember what we talked about in yesterday's video around you know 7 minutes 30 second 35 seconds we were literally talking about this possibility that next candle itself can go up to this range and get rejected and i explained the reason of why i think so because we are getting that exact movement right now in the market and keep this in mind this level of support is still holding that as positive for the bulls that is really positive because we're still holding on i look at the macd and the rsi macd crossed to the downside but rsi is right now showing okay i'm slowly trying to make a double bottom and a break to the upside and slowly grind back to test this range if it's possible to break this level now things change the direction of movement change the attraction is now to the upside bulls enter that's going to be great now take the same concept here the weekly macd is crossing to the upside uh -huh. the monthly has already crossed to the upside so you have like two thought process here the monthly crossed to the upside and as soon as that cross happened you actually got a consolidation the price action actually came back low and then went back up so you got volatility so the weekly when it actually crossed to the downside this is what we are just talking about in xrp as well that's why i'm reiterating that here when the weekly close to the downside you actually get some kind of correction yes you do get that but what happens the weekly immediately rotates back up because the monthly is going the other direction so now for xrp that exact same scenario has higher odds of playing out great now we can actually break all this down but understand the macro is important understanding this is key in your success as an investor long term let it be just crypto let it be stocks any market you are in having this idea of what's happening in the macro market gives you a huge advantage of positioning yourself well enough welcome to the scientific investor family where the normal retail guys get the ability to learn how to become the next top 10 person of this world now yes we actually see cards say moving up we actually see that pumping agreed but the movement was not a surprise because it was already in the chart showing i'm trying to break through this range of resistance which means as soon as you break you should gather momentum and that's exactly what i told to the si family 
right? Those who follow the group actually get these on the right time. So you can position yourself well. And right now in the market, right now, the volume is going high in some of these assets where they are showing you I'm breaking higher. And we are on that call, right? We are looking for some of these assets which are actually looking to do a literal 300 to 500% move when the entire market is slow, which actually gives you the narrative of some of these assets are about to take off. If you remember what we went through in the Jan Feb, you already understand the fetch, the 5 to 8x, the AGIX, 10x, all these calls, they came through in just two and a half months, three months time. That was actually a great time. And the exact same thing is coming back. And there is a bit of difference. Some of these other assets which performed great last time are slowing down this time. They are not actually giving you that vibe that I'm about to run higher in terms of the volume, in terms of the technicals. The market psychology doesn't look that attractive. Yeah, they are not bad, but they don't actually show what they showed last time. And that's why we've been searching for a lot of these assets and posting regularly here. So if you are interested in that, you can look at the Patreon. The link is given in the description below. And if you like the direction where we are going, please do hit that like button. That supports the channel a lot. Now, jumping back into the price action side of things. You actually need to understand, yes, that's the macro, that's the weekly. Now, one of the reasons why I actually reiterate the short-term movement is because that creates a lot of panic in the market. Say, I was actually, you know, asked by one of the uh, uh, individual who follows the SI family for a long time about, you know, I'm a short-term guy. I'm like, yeah, we do discuss short term in a lot of detail, right? So the question was like, this is about the BCP and that kind of narrative. And I'm like, yeah, everyone has their narrative, right? And then we know what just happened yesterday. Then we know what just happened today. So it's not a coincidence which happens once in a while. Those who follow me already understand that. And one of the primary reason why I do focus on the short-term market volatility is I understand I've seen people making very bad decisions, extremely worse decisions due to short-term market volatility because they think that volatility is going to go down, it's going to drop, you know, all the way down. They take wrong decisions. But when they are prepared, when they know this is coming, they are actually making money. They're actually adding more units by taking some out at the top when it's about to drop and adding the same at the bottom. So we see people like this where I'm really happy, right? They've been following for three years and I'm really happy. Now, yeah, some of these guys are, you know, extremely intelligent. When I say take profit 30%, they take 80%. And what happens? The market drops, boom. So yeah, I'm a long-term guy, but these guys get the better advantage. Why? The thought process is different for everyone. That's where having the right information and the intelligence gives you the ability because you are most likely you're far intelligent than me. And the only advantage I have is I've been reading the charts for like last seven years. So I can give you the narrative of what the market is saying and you may take the best decision than me, right? So that's why joining as a team helps, learning helps. Now, short term, when you actually look at Bitcoin, we all understand the fact that, yeah, this engulfing candle didn't actually complete as an engulfing candle, but it did show us the volatility to the downside, and it did confirm that majority of the movement to the upside created by this bull was completely erased. That's not a proper, you know, bullish stance you need to actually take there, because when you actually go on a daily, you do see that the bulls tried to push this to the upside, Sellers came in, pushed that back to the downside, but bulls won the day. That's actually positive. One, we are holding on to the 21-day moving average. Uh -huh, we are above that. Two, bulls are still in charge. They're still holding on to this level of support. What we do want to look at is the scenario here. This week, when the candle closes, if you see the engulfing candle formed here is still active, meaning it's controlling the market, then we do have bad times coming. Maybe a month where we are slowing down. And if that's happening, and on the XRP side, it shows three, four weeks can be slow, that is in line. We actually understand that, okay, that's possible, that's huge. 
So by that, what I mean is that if you actually see a slow down towards $27,000 in Bitcoin, that's going to create massive opportunities. And in between, you will see same level of volatility. You will actually observe assets popping like this. So if you are taking benefit of those moves, you may not actually feel much bored in the market. Now, this is not just about that, but also about the comfortability. If you are comfortable in the market and your emotions are checked correctly, you are here as a long-term investor. You are about to load up on other assets. Maybe it's just, you know, you trade and make 10% profit, 20% profit. You take that profit, buy more XRP. If you are like me, the XRP guy, you would do that. If you're like, okay, I'm entirely in the payment space. Great, I do that. XRP, XLM, HBAR, Quant, XDC. You accumulate on all of these assets. So if that's your aim, now some of these assets are starting to show you opportunity. Now you just have to go through these charts, search through these charts and see where the volume agrees with the price action. If the price action is showing you I'm breaking higher, great, use that. But what happens in the market is if you think there are like, you know, few people using some of these magical indicators, it's useless basically. Because what makes an indicator useful, literally think about this, think about this clearly, huh? useful is that if you see an opportunity, I see an opportunity, and the majority of the world doesn't, you know, they're not actually going to buy that. It's not going to go up, basically. So when majority of the investors, traders are taking similar actions, they see a breakout. It should be visible to all of them, and all of them take actions. That's where the price actually goes up. Great. The algorithms already follows this. They understand once the candle closes, the breakout is confirmed they take in charge. They actually lead the market to the upside or to the downside. That's what you should be looking forward to. That's the reason why I follow the RSI. I follow the MACD. I've said this you know, a year or two back. Use the indicators which are being used by the institutions, the whales and majority of the investing world. You can actually get the surveys. You can actually get the literature on this. Great. Now, Jumping back into the XRP side of things. On a weekly, it does show you we are above the 21-day moving average. We are finding support. That's a beautiful thing. But yes, the MACD is slow. It's not showing much of a bullishness. Agreed. Then you come on the daily to see what the hell is happening because at that point, the daily is showing, I'm about to cross to the upside. Weekly, maybe slow. I don't care. I'm going up. So what's the narrative here? XRP a short-term movement to 0 0.48, uh, you know, that wouldn't be a huge movement, but still something positive. Then a break of that would lead us towards 0.5. Again, small movements in the market, but still that would agree that the MACD is crossing back to the upside. We get some movement. All of this leads back to what? The monthly movement we are watching, a big bank to the upside. Maybe, you know, right now it seems so irritating that the price is just below 0.5. I know a lot of you guys are out there holding XRP, accumulating XRP from a very long time and now, you know, you have a big giant XRP bag and your average would be somewhere below 0 0.3, 0 0.4, that range. And when the price pops, maybe $1, $2, $3, the temptation would be so high to take the profit because you've been through a lot in the market and you're like, a 5x, it's okay, I'm happy. A 10x, it's okay, it's happy. That's where the exit strategy helps you. That's where knowing how to take profits and how to use that gives you an advantage. So be prepared on that. Why? Because if this bull flag breaks to the upside on the monthly, that can be a giant candle. We have actually seen these, right? A movement from 0.23 all the way up to like 0.78. Yes, on a monthly, that's a great giant candle because that shows you bulls are active in this market and it's about to go higher. So once you miss that one candle there, yes, it's a monthly candle, but if you actually plot that and then go back on a weekly, you will see one thing. Just one candle had the majority of the ROI there. So if you miss that one candle, you almost missed almost all the run up in that 239% move because this actually adds up. When you actually get the signal that the market is slowing down somewhat, 
you exit. We had the call exactly somewhere close to 0.74. Go back the date, you'll see in the YouTube what we were talking about, right? So this gives you an advantage to understand how things work. Price action showed you I'm slowing down. Price action showed you I'm slowing down. We took the profit both times. 1.91 was what we did, right? Here was 0.74, even though the price was around 0.8. Mm -hmm. but still somewhere close to the top. Now, if you look at the reality here, if that bounce happens to start from here, what is the actual range of first movement? Because you shouldn't be surprised, right? You're looking at the price action moving like this, which means the first leg of movement is somewhat around 85%. It's not, you know, 80x. So, when the price action actually breaks the 0.5 range, now we are looking for somewhat close to a dollar range. So that means a pop to a dollar shouldn't actually surprise you and it shouldn't make you do stupid things. Meaning, if you want to take some profits, your average is at 0.25, great. You want to take 4%, 5% in your portfolio, great. Maybe 10%, it's up to you. Like if you have a huge lot of XRP, then you're like, okay, I don't care. I'll take 5% of XRP, 10% of XRP. It's okay for me. It's great because you accumulated at 0.25. The price went up 400% profit. It's all great. But what you have to also notice at the same time is the fact that the macro of XRP is actually going somewhere else. That's a big story, meaning if the price actually bounces from here, decides to go test a dollar range, that's showing you this takeoff. And that usually doesn't end at a dollar. And that usually does not end up with a small run. It always goes through that kind of a phase where you miss if you stay out of the market. Why is that? Because you went through a lot of consolidative movements, irritative movements, flushing and rinsing people out. We have seen that, right? Especially in XRP, XLM, there's a lot ha happening there. And once this take off, all these people come back. The FOMO, you know, then the new buyers, the new marketing, you know. Once the price actually moves above a dollar, XRP is going to be acting like people are going to get the attention. You know, that market psychology comes back in. That's interesting because on a weekly, when the MACD is showing I'm about to cross to the downside, RSI is showing I'm about to bounce off from the trend line. And I'm like, okay, this trend line is becoming stronger and stronger, even though the MACD is showing I'm about to cross to the downside. Because last time that happened, RSI won. MACD had to bounce back up. So I'm watching like, okay, this is actually crossing to the downside. We are barely getting red here in the MACD like what we saw here. Will the weekly prevail or will the monthly prevail? And especially what's coming in next couple of days. That's where I'm looking at the daily and the daily goes like I'm going in line with the monthly. And I'm happy with that because the macro now aligns with the short term segment. That's great. Because when you actually see some volatility, you know opportunities are actually popping up, right? So maybe next two, three days, it can be positive. And next two, three weeks, it can be negative. And then the next month ends up like a huge move to the upside. Because we need to actually see one thing. The daily chart, it doesn't lie. It's going to work out as it is. The weekly chart, it's not going to lie. It's going to work out as it is. Then comes the monthly, right? And you get the confirmation at the daily close, the weekly close, and the monthly close. Now, for the monthly close, you still have to wait another 20 days. Weekly, yeah, we are just starting one week. A week of waiting is necessary. That's one of the reasons why we follow micro and short-term charts to understand, okay, what's happening. So you shouldn't be surprised with any of these moves in the market, right? If the price action gets rejected at the resistance here, it may not look great. Now, what am I talking about? Should I go with the daily? Should I go with the weekly? That thought process would still be there. This is what I'm talking about. You went up, you retested, you got rejected, boom. Now we came back down, you're trying to make a double bottom. So if that double bottom holds and you go back up, break this and get back in, great, bullish things. But as long as you actually stay below this trend line, I'm like, ah, bears are stepping back in, right? That's the hard truth. Now, what is happening is even inside that? 
the pattern itself shows okay there can be a correction move to the downside it's okay why because the daily shows you bullishness the monthly shows you bullishness it's just the weekly hammering you meaning on the weekly segment it's going to be two or three weeks of patience now take all this boil all this down into the market and look for opportunities within that exact same horizon because during that time you'll see a lot of these assets which uh, is getting a lot of volume right now will actually start to pop so look at these assets where they have a lot of volume compared to others in the same hundred category and look for opportunities there when they are showing breakouts most likely that's going to work why ta is understanding the psychology of the market and if there is no big market it's hard to understand the mass psychology right now if you look for all these 100 to 200 there's only one asset showing that amount of volume 200 to 300 it's only like two assets showing decent volume so you actually it's easy to filter out assets to look for breakouts that now works out it breaks higher it come back down retest and bounce conservative if you're a conservative guy go for the retest and bounce that gives you a higher odds of success so guys if you receive value please do hit that like and subscribe button and if you are really looking for these kind of updates where you actually understand this is happening in the market that's an opportunity if i have that restaurants i can go in if that's you you can look at the patreon the link is given in the description below i'll meet you on the next video bye for now